with the rise of the pandemic, we've also seen the huge rise in these supplement companies, right? Everybody is selling immunity boosters these days. How cautious should one be while consuming these immunity pills? So uh, the whole uh, wording of immunity booster is actually a marketing gimmick. It has absolutely no scientific value. So if you look at immune system, it is a very complex system. It has something known as uh, innate immunity. It has adaptive immunity. You know, it has a lot of lot of cells in the body that you know interact with each other. They secrete some chemicals known as chemokines, interleukins. That is how the whole immune system works. Now, when they are marketing a product, saying that this is immune immune booster, I mean, what are they targeting? Are they targeting the immune, innate immune system or the adaptive immune system? Which cell they are targeting? What functions in the immune system they are targeting? Nothing. So it's just a blind blanket term that is uh, out in the open for marketing. So anybody who says immune booster, people just run and you know buy it because they are all panicking because of the pandemic. And this is a very important aspect of alternative medicine marketing, where they love to fish in murky waters. That is what they do. They wait for such opportunities and they advertise and they sell. So anything that has to do with immunity boosting, it does not boost your immunity. It will actually lighten your wallet and your purse and actually boost their sales. That is what it boosts actually, not immunity. And some of these immunity boosters like Giloy, uh, and the, they are all well known to cause liver injury. And this is, this is documented, published data. Most of these herbal medicines can actually act on your immune system. For example, I've had patients who have consumed multiple uh, herbal products and come with something known as autoimmune hepatitis. So what these herbal medicines can do is that they can actually disrupt your immune system and actually cause the immune system to fight your body. And this is what is known as autoimmune disease. And we have seen a lot of patients with autoimmune liver disease, which is triggered by use of these herbs. When I was going to your Twitter handle, I saw there was a tweet where you had spoken about or you tweeted that there was a patient that was referred to you and she was consuming Coronil and Lip 52 And when you ran some tests, you found out that, well, tell us about the findings. And, and so, her liver functions were not normal. Yeah. So, so uh, this was one, uh, this, I mean, because I, I, uh, my interest uh, is actually herbal liver injury because I work a lot on it. Uh, I do basic science work also on it. So I get a lot of referrals uh, from patients and from doctors uh, you know, for this condition. And along with these referrals actually come all these drugs that have been retrieved from these patients for me to analyze. So that is an extra step that I do for my patients. And uh, I pay uh, from my pocket. I don't charge the patients nothing because this is actually part of the public health work that I do. Oh, uh, in that in that particular uh, regard, uh, I had a referral from a doctor from Chennai who actually identified a patient who developed severe liver injury. He was a normal person, no other diseases, everything was fine. But he started taking coronal for uh, his immune boosting. And after did, taking, he, did he have COVID nineteen? No, no, he is he was taking this for uh, preventing COVID nineteen. Okay. Yeah, so I like I like the immunity booster that we spoke about. So he was taking this for a few weeks and then suddenly he started having loss of appetite and then developed jaundice. And then he was seen by this doctor who identified this as drug-induced liver injury because every other causes were ruled out. Even the liver biopsy showed drug-induced liver injury. So he retrieved this drug and then sent to my lab. And we have an independent lab, which is government approved, NABA approved, uh, who does this uh, particular analysis known as PCMS, gas chromatography mass spectroscopy, which is actually very sensitive chemical analysis where we can identify a lot of uh, components in a particular product. And after running these tests, we identified that, uh, you know, coronal and even LIF-52 actually had contaminants in the form of uh, lead, arsenic, mercury. It also had insecticides, pesticides. It had uh, uh, antibiotics as adulterants and also something known as phytochemicals, which are actually plant component steroids or alkaloids or something known as sesquite terpenes. These are all plant products, natural plant products, but these all have the potential to harm liver or kidneys. And these are all well documented in literature. So all of this stuff was inside this particular medicine that this person was consuming. And this was the reason why he developed liver injury. Now, none of these products are actually tested in the sense, not, that, like, not the kind of testing that I do, but they're not tested in clinical trials. We have to have phase one, phase two, phase three, phase four, and pharmacovigilance trials to actually identify the safety and benefit of these drugs. 
just because somebody says it is herbal it is natural it doesn't mean it is safe so that is known as appealing to nature which is a logical fallacy you don't appeal to nature to treat a patient you actually need evidence to treat a patient so none of these are actually evidence based management which means that they can actually harm you even though they have they may have benefit we don't know but they can actually harm you if you don't look at it in the right way when you talk about a ministry which is sort of promoting this uh, you know when it runs campaigns on was distributing covid 19 cure medication which is ayush 64 what what do you think of that when you've already done tests on coronel and leaf 52 and you've found that alternative medicine a lot of times can induce liver injury then you actually have uh, these people promoting these medicines without any any empirical studies um the i think the the ministry is actually forgetting what it's been it's, it's actually built for you know the ministry is supposed to regulate not promote so if you have a, a particular herb that actually has no clinical evidence for benefit but can actually harm the ministry is supposed to tell the general population that you know there is a herb for example take ashwagandha ashwagandha is actually liver toxic there are multiple studies done in the us and uh, in the in europe it actually shows that ashwagandha ashwagandha can cause liver injury especially when combined with other herbs so the ministry should be saying that you know there is this herb ashwagandha it can actually cause liver injury when combined with other herbs and it has no clinical evidence to support its use in any disease condition so you be please be careful you know that is what the ministry should be doing but instead of that what the ministry is doing is they are promoting they are promoting it because they want sales to happen they think they are doing something uh, culturally uh, superior or nationalistically superior for the citizens of india when they are actually bringing down the scientific temper of this country and by doing this i don't think they are bothered about public health because what they are bothered is that they have to uh, at least make the make the stakeholders happy that is why they are doing this i mean i don't think there is any public health featuring in all of these uh, tweets that the ayush ministry brings out so if anybody is following the ayush ministry on twitter please unfollow them because recently the all of the tweets are actually very damaging for the public health for example the recent tweet on uh, mucormycosis they have actually mentioned that you know one should uh, go for homeopathy medicines for uh, mucormycosis the black fungus there is no data no clinical studies to suggest homeopathy is good for any disease especially uh, mucormycosis which is actually very dreaded fungal infection which needs even up to surgical management sometimes and antifungals and they have actually mentioned some uh, uh, sugar pills and water for treating severe mucormycosis including septicemia which is actually bloodstream infection of the fungus and patients can actually die if they go for uh, homeopathic management of these uh, conditions what do you have to say to people then and this is how i think most of the people end up taking uh, alternative medicine is when they hear somebody else has had some kind of benefit or they think they've had some kind of benefit from that medicine so if you have a chronic illness someone says listen i took ashwagandha like you mentioned and it helped me that's how it works so for all those people who give these these examples where it has helped them personally and that's why they are okay with this that as long as it has helped me i'm going to keep taking it what do you say to them yes so this is a very important uh, part from the argumentative side of alternative medicine right so what they do is uh, if if i have a cold and i take homeopathy or a, or a herb and my cold goes away it doesn't mean that this cold has to go away for everybody who takes it so this is actually something known as placebo effect which is why we have clinical trials in place so what i do is i take 10 people five of with cold including me and five of us take the drug or homeopathy or herbal drug or homeopathy and five of them we don't give any drug now we follow them up for two weeks and we see that all of us do not have any more cold after two weeks so the ones who took the drug and the ones who did not take the drug had the same outcome which means even without the drug things can get better this is known as placebo effect so this is what uh, these homeopaths and ayurvedic specialists they what they do is they actually advertise they advertise their personal experiences the patient's personal experiences and there is a saying that the plural of anecdote is not that it is still a personal experience and personal experience is not what we treat patients with we actually treat patients with evidence generation so if somebody uh, this is also a major uh, advertising point for these uh, alternative practitioners where they will show photos and videos of one or two patients and they say that you know my drug cured them 
this is very wrong this is immoral i can clearly see that you're very passionate about this uh, you know and i see that even on your twitter timeline and all the papers that you published but then you have a baba ramdev who uh, who first has this rant about allo allopathy and modern medicine and doctors and then he sends 25 questions to doctor saying i i have permanent cure to uh, hypothyroidism or diabetes uh you know arthritis or whatever else you don't seem to have it so how is it that you're better than me so i mean if you looked at uh, the whole issue of baba ramdev and patanjali um if you look at those questions you can actually make out that they have absolutely no idea about science scientific method or trials or whatever they have no idea about it because those questions are actually very lay unreasonable illogical questions if somebody says i can cure diabetes is a quack because you cannot cure diabetes you can actually control diabetes you can actually go make the disease going to remission you cannot cure it infections yes you can cure because you give antibiotics infection goes away But diabetes thyroid disease these are all chronic diseases which we can control and there are very good measures in medical management in modern medicine where we can actually use it now somebody like baba ramdev he is he is a complete charlatan in the sense that he does not represent ayurveda neither he represents uh, uh, modern medicine or, or spirituality he is a pakka businessman he knows how to sell his angles and that is how he is working towards uh, you know selling coronal now these guys actually how have they have found out a way how to use scientific terms in pseudo scientific matters so this is known as integrative medicine so what they do is just to fool the public they will use words like oxidative stress immune system uh you know uh, they'll say uh, uh inflammatory pathways interleukin you know coronal takes care of all of this actually it's complete bogus they just use these words to confuse the uh, lay person to make them understand you know these guys are scientific but they are actually not and the 25 questions i don't think anybody should even answer them because i think uh, those are unanswerable questions because it's it's written by a lay charlatan person who has no clue about what science is Thank you so much, Doctor Abby Phillips, for taking the time out and uh, you know just putting it out there so lucidly. Keep fighting the fight, and we wish you all the very best. Thank you for having me.